All right, so Nick Saban retires, and Alabama instantly regrets it. Ohio State has had enough, I guess. Ohio State looked around, and they saw maize and blue confetti falling out of the sky a couple of weeks ago on a Monday night and said, all right, game on. Hey, I think it's a a make-or-break season for Ryan Day. I think that's why he's going so hard in the portal, spending all this money, fundraising, stockpiling rookies and not rookies, freshmen and quarterbacks and receivers and safeties, whoever whoever he can get, they coming. And they looked around and said, we're located in what? Columbus, Ohio? We got how many deep pocketed boosters? You can do what legally in this sport now? Game on. Ohio State has gone on an absolute supermarket sweep rampage of the transfer portal. Ohio State uh, wants a program that I would reference on this show as not a big NIL player in the game, has all of a sudden become uh, probably the apex predator of NIL players in the game. Caleb Downs is now an Ohio State Buckeye. That was earthquake-type news the other day, by the way. Everyone, just about, was convinced he was going to Georgia. And all of a sudden, what was it, Friday night, Jesse, I guess? It was Friday night, all of a sudden the news pops and uh, next thing I know, I'm over on CBS Sports HQ talking to the esteemed Hakeem Dermish about what kind of impact he was going to make in Columbus, Ohio. Hey, that's a huge deal. And then you add that on to the fact that they got Will Howard from Kansas State. Uh, they got Quinchon Judkins from Ole Miss. And then since then, they've landed Julian Sayan, who was the number one quarterback in this past cycle that had just been on campus at Alabama for about Hey, man. Y'all stop saying that he was not the number one quarterback in 2024. Like, we got to stop this hype machine stuff, man. Only one platform had him rated number one, and that's on three or one, whatever they call. Everybody else had him two or three. It's like, y'all stop saying that, man. <laughs> about 15 minutes as an early enrollee, and down the road, I'll talk to you about how all that went down. But the end result is... Ohio State right now. Let me give you a little. <clears throat> y'all really bragging about Seth McLaughlin? How do you say his last name? Like, did y'all watch the national championship game? Not the national championship game. Did y'all watch the what bowl was that? Well, he was. Oh my god! An early show paper pop <laughs> statistic. Oh they have added seven five stars via the portal or recruiting for this cycle. That's more than the rest of the Big Ten combined. You understand what I just said? That's with Oregon and USC and Washington and UCLA. Ohio State has signed more five-star talent. Ohio State has now acquired more five-star talent in this cycle, portal recruiting combined, than the rest of their conference combined. They've acquired more than Bama, Texas combined. Never seen Ohio State do this before. Josh, Ohio State's always recruited well. Not like this. Well, Josh, Ohio State's always gotten players. Not like this. Now, what does it guarantee? Nothing but pressure. But I'm telling you right now, if Ryan Day doesn't win a national championship this year, he out of there. I'm telling you, I said it when we first started the video. This is a make or break season for Ryan Day. Like, there's no other reason why he would go this hard in the portal and accumulate this kind of debt, bringing in all these players, unless it was like a make or break season for him. He's all in, and I hate me. I, I want to see what happens. I really want to see what happens. Guarantee anything. I'm not going to sit here tonight in January and suggest it does, but as of today, they are the second odds on favorite to win the national championship this upcoming year, and I imagine that market may move a little bit. This is a major shift, one that I'm not surprised they're able to do. There are some programs out there capable of spending this kind of money if they wanted to. Ohio State's not alone in that. But seeing Michigan win a national championship did something to these people. The desperate times call for desperate measures. And the thing about it is Ohio State does not have to mortgage their entire future and take out loans and spend irresponsibly to do this. Those are some of the deepest pockets in the sport there in Columbus, Ohio. They could easily afford to do this. I told you a couple of things were happening around that program over the last month that I didn't necessarily think Ryan Day loved, and I don't think it's stuff he wants to do. I don't think a lot of these staff moves he's made are moves that he was in love with making, but they're necessary. I don't think Bill O'Brien is necessary for anybody. Like, name, like I said, I'm, I am going to keep saying this. Name me a successful Bill O'Brien location landing spot they had success at 
Name me a location where he had success at that didn't have Tom Brady. Anybody that coached Tom Brady while he was at New England has an asterisk next to their name. It's just what it is. They have an asterisk. So Bill O'Brien outside of Tom Brady is what? And I don't think in his heart of hearts, Ryan Day really wants to be spending this kind of money on, in some cases, unproven players, but I think he feels like he has to. And you know what? Unlike years past, when Ohio State would kind of look down their nose, maybe rightfully so, at some programs down south that trafficked in this stuff when it wasn't legal, you're allowed to do it now. And so when the current structure of the game affords you the opportunity to take advantage of a talent acquisition mechanism, they're doing it. Uh, there's some places where they don't want to jump in like this. There's some other places that right now famously don't even want to traffic in the portal period. It's an evolving philosophy. That's why it's another reason now why I continue to say, don't just say things like a Ryan Day team can't do this, can't do that. Don't say a Ryan Day program can't do this and that because the very nature of what a Ryan Day team is continues to evolve. The very nature of what a Ryan Day program is continues to evolve. They won with defense this year. Who in the world would have thought they were going to win with defense two years ago? They could have one of, if not the best defenses in the country this upcoming year. No one would have said that. No one would have thought a Ryan Day team was going to be that two years ago, nor did anyone think a Ryan Day team was going to completely take a sledgehammer to every nearby ATM to do what they're doing in NIL? But they are. So what does this mean? Well, it means that they've got some really, really talented football players, even more so than they'd normally have on campus. It means that they are going to be the overwhelming favorite in many people's minds to win their conference and to maybe win the national championship this upcoming year. It's going to create... Pressure, unlike Ryan Day's seen there, and that guy has lived in a microscope. He has lived under a white-hot spotlight, but even more so, I think, now because the expectation will be that Michigan takes a step back. The expectation will be that Ohio State sort of reascends to the spot that they once enjoyed there, and that was a firm grip on the number one spot in their conference. Ohio State's not a window team. A lot of people were asking, what do you think about it? Uh, well, I'm not in love with the idea that this is the way college football works right now, but it is the way it works. So it's not shot taking time at Ohio State. But the difference here, as opposed to some other programs out there that you're seeing take real big swings at the pinata, is Ohio State is not a window team. When I say window team, I mean a team that circles a year and disproportionately gathers funding much more so than they did last cycle or they're going to be able to do next cycle. It's like saving up your money to buy a car. And a lot of programs do that with NIL, and they will do that with NIL. And there's one in Oxford, Mississippi, I believe, doing it right now. And they're going all in on 2024. Ohio State can just go all in on every year. Texas can go all in on every year. There are about a dozen programs out there that could easily fit the bill financially of going all in every year. So my point is, I... I'm not choosing to look at this and saying, all right, well, they'll try this out this cycle, but then it'll be back to normal. First, there is no normal anymore, first off. And secondly, what if it works out for them? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the alternative in a second, but what if it works out for them? What if they have excellent chemistry with this group? What if it doesn't fracture the locker room? It will. You can't bring in this many high-dollar players because you already had a good team, and you already are – and you already – are returning a bunch of players who forego who forego the NFL draft to return for another season. So that's a lot of talent in one room. Are you, I don't know if you're going to be able to keep them all happy. It's going to cause some issues, man. What if it all comes together and they win a title this year? Well, that would be validation that they took the right approach, and they'd probably just hit rinse, repeat, copy, paste on this every year. Conversely, this is foreign territory for pretty much everyone up there. They've never acquired talent using these means. Uh, they have never brought talent in to this degree using the portal like this. They've seen some guys leave, but Ohio State has not in mass gone and spent to acquire talent in the portal. Um, so it may work out for them. You also have the flip side. You have the opportunity to find out the side effects of acquiring all that talent. 
they wouldn't be the first one to deal with it. They certainly won't be the last. So we're in January, is my point. And there, there is no need to start making these grandiose predictions. And there's no need to start stamping anybody to the college football playoff or the Big Ten championship game. You can. I'm not. What I am very interested in seeing is how it plays out. I know what the pressure is going to be like up there, as do you. That's nothing new for them. I think it'll be a little bit different in tone because they've chosen to go this route. Not mad at them whatsoever for going this route. I would hope down the road that there's a little bit different structure in place in the sport in general where this is not necessarily the way it's working this time of year, at least. Uh, but as for now, that is the way it works. And so hats off to them for getting aggressive enough to do what needs to be done in a way that it's allowed to be done, I guess is the best way I can summarize that. That's like the, that's like the bumper sticker version of what- Very, very well put. Best way you could put it. I think, hey man, they doing it legally within bounds and they spending a whole lot of money. What they're doing. Do we have that Lane Kiffin tweet, by the way, Jesse? So Lane Kiffin, college football commentator, also a head coach every now and then, said um, he didn't say anything. He retweeted a report, and then he always puts the caption of the report in the body of the tweet, which is fascinating. Report, Ohio State Buckeyes spent $13 million and counting in NIL money in attempt to field elite roster, gridiron heroics. <sighs> so did they. Maybe not to that extent in Oxford, but so did they. I could interpret that a number of ways. I could interpret it to mean Lane Kiffin saying, look, we're not the only ones doing it. Even the big boys are doing it. I could take it to mean him saying, look, this is just the way it is now. This is the way it has to be. If you're going to win, you got to spend. Did you notice that figure? I'm not even going to vouch for whether it's valid or not. Let's just for a second blindly assume that Ohio State has spent $13 million to acquire this class. What do you think about that number? In the, in the free agency world of college football, what do you think about that number? Because it's huge. It's a huge, huge number. But let's just say it's valid. I had someone at a major program sit me down in their office during this past season and explain to me how they thought about $8 million is what it would take to field an elite top 10 competitive roster now moving forward. They wanted to be in the 7 to $9 million dollar per year payroll range. That's what they thought it'd take. This number is north of that. I don't think in good conscience Ohio State plans on spending that kind of money every year, but let's just say they did. There is thinking out there that mm, we got to have our collectives step up. Or if you, if you, if you want to do what Ohio State did, you guys work in your nine to five jobs, you need to, you need to donate 15 and 20 dollars at the time and we can make this happen. And it is insane to me. I cannot believe that's where we are right now. I cannot believe in a sport and a couple of conferences in this sport with the SEC and Big Ten where they have signed multi-billion dollar media rights deals. They are on the precipice of every program bringing in about eight figures per year and not on the low end, just in media rights money alone. It don't shock me. I mean... $13 million is a small price to pay for a billion dollar contract. That's peanuts, man. He, and we all know a lot of the players on these teams that are getting these high dollar NILs are going to make millions of dollars in the NFL. They're going to go first round and get $32 million. So the fact that you can get all those players for only $13 million for a billion dollar contract just for TV rights and media rights, come on, man. That's a boy. The numbers gonna get a lot crazier than that, cause the players gonna want their money, and I'm gonna show advocate for them. I'm gonna make sure they get it. I want everybody to get paid. I want you to have to pay everybody, <laughs> pay them all. And because we have this rule conveniently, conveniently placed for them, that athletic departments can't contribute to the collective. Well, guys, we we'd love to take care of our own payroll with this money, but instead we're just gonna hire 20 new administrators here and divide the money up that way. We're going to build facilities uh, so we can hide some of this money. You guys are going to have to fund the collective, though. Yeah, you're working at a gas station. You drive a bus route. You're working construction. 
you're trying to put your kids through college, yeah, trying to make ends meet, put food on the table, do all that, but also give your $19.95 a month to collective you so we can compete with Ohio State. And then some coaches have the audacity and the gall to step to podiums and shame fan bases, fans, the normal fans, when they can't match dollar for dollar um, figures being put out there on the collective market. Just fascinating times, huh? I, I will promise you this. It won't be like this very much longer. Now, I don't know what the replacement model will be. There is no way. I, mark my words. There is no way. <laughs> there is no way that certain people are going to allow the sport to continue to operate as it is right now because it's insane right now. Uh, there will be parameters. There will be guardrails. Now, what that comes in conjunction with is still very much open to interpretation, but I... No, it ain't. They gonna have all they gonna do is do, do just like the NFL. College football is pretty much a developmental league for the NFL anyway, so they're gonna put a salary cap or NIL cap, however they want to phrase it. They're just gonna cap the salary for schools across the board at the Power Five level. You can spend up to here. If you go over this amount, you got to pay a luxury tax like they do in the NBA. So that's all they're gonna do is gonna turn it to the NFL. And that's why Nick Saban got up out of here, because the same thing that that troubled him in the NFL was about to trouble him at the college level. Because in the NFL, you got to pay them boys and you got to keep them happy. You got to sign those contracts. And guess what you got to do in college right now? Pay them boys, keep them happy, and sign them contracts. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments below. I'm out of here.